Well, moving right along, um, we have got next up in line, um, Laura Sosa, who has done Sosa, who's done terrific work working with um, David Sims for satellite tagging um, sunfishes and her uh, um, in the in the Atlantic. She's going to be summarizing, um, well, I think all of the satellite work that's been done so far across the globe, including her own. And um, she recorded her talk earlier. So her talk is Movements in Foraging Behavior of the Ocean Sunfishes. But um, let me just say that um, Laura is, is um, did her PhD on the behavior, predation, prey, and fisheries interactions of MOLA in the Northeast Atlantic. She is now a postdoc researcher at Wild CRU, University of Oxford, and has is, and is, um, gone on to land. She's looking at landscape ecology of carnivores in Africa. Um, but she did write the eighth chapter of our Ocean Sunfish book on, um, on locomotion, on, on, yes, on movements. Of sunfish. So, on to Laura. So, hi everyone. I, I'm Laura, and I'm going to be talking about the movements and the foraging behavior of the ocean sunfishes. I'm really sorry that I can't be present at the symposium, um, but I'm sure that you're having an awesome time celebrating the the, the Molide. I'm going to leave our contacts in the end of the talk. If you cannot get hold of it to me, it should be around. But just in case, if you have any questions, uh, drop us an email. So I'm going to focus on the general patterns of both at the horizontal and the vertical scales. And I'm going to start exactly with the large scale horizontal movements. So we all know now that the sunfishes are widely distributed and that historically they were thought to drift passively, mainly the, uh, due to their uh, atypical morphology and the characteristic passing behavior. You can see that uh, clearly depicted in this um, illustration here an ancient uh, Japanese one, over 200 years old, um, of a large sunfish, a huge sunfish, uh, laying at the surface of the water with the fishermen just collecting the meat. But we now know, thanks to advancing technology, that they're actually cap capable of bursting speeds and um, long distance movements against the major current regimes. And we know this uh, mainly due to um, satellite tagging and tracking data so how do you actually capture a sunfish for deploying the tags from our personal experience in using set nets if they're small enough you just jump in the water and grab them but sometimes you need any, a little help as in this case here of this massive mola in japan being brought on board uh, with the mechanical help uh, so far, sunfishes have been tracked uh, using three main uh, types of satellite tags. The PSAT, which together with the light levels, record um, depth and temperature. And after a predetermined time, release themselves, float to the surface and um, transmit summaries of the data recorded through the satellite. The spot tags, which is, are these uh, fin mounted um, devices that usually when the sunfish is at the surface, the fish is at the surface and the air, air aerial completely dries, it just transmits the position to the satellite and you can know more or less in near real time where the sunfish is heading. And lastly, the fast lock GPS, which is basically the same as the previous ones, sorry, but have the, the capacity, the added capacity of capturing the GPS constellation. So, Together with the large scale um, Argus uh, resolution data set, you, you can have access to a very fine and refined scale um, of the GPS. Uh, in terms of the timeline of the tracking study, so the first satellite tagged sunfish was a Mola Mola um, of San Diego. However, the first published track data is actually referring to, for, or from a Masturus, a Sartel Mola by sites two years later, and they deployed um, a PSAT, so recorded depth and temperature profiles of the fish. Since then, many more fishes, many more sunfishes were uh, tagged and tracked worldwide. And that's exactly what I'm going to show next, where all these studies have happened. And you can see that over 70 individuals were tagged so far and tracked, uh, mainly Mola Mola, but also some Alexandrini. 
uh, in detail, we have here the data set of MOLAS um, of California. The track, the uh, Alexandrini trajectory of the Galapagos. The MOLA, MOLA data set on, um, from Western uh, no Northwest Atlantic. Our Northeast Atlantic data set. Those from South Africa. Then the Alexandrini data set of uh, Bali. The most recent study which has uh, the tracked both both species, so one Mola Mola and one Alexandrini of Taiwan, and the Mola Mola data set uh, of Japan. So what all these studies are, the majority of these studies have showed us is that the sunfishes embark on these general north-south seasonal migrations. And you can see that clearly here for the Northeast Atlantic, for instance, with the, this individual target in winter, so the sunfish started to head uh, south as soon as the, the well, likely avoiding the cooling of the water temperatures. Whereas this uh, mola tagged in summer, although it spent some more time in the Gulf of Cadiz, it also embarked in a northward uh, um, movement along the, the, the appalling frontal um, region there of Iberia. And as soon as the water temp temperatures started to cool down, the sunfish just started to head south or head back south. This is not exclusive for the Northeast Atlantic and has been shown elsewhere, like the Western Pacific and the Northwest Atlantic, and has been linked to a thermal band or thermal envelope preference for the, for the species. It also mimics those uh, movements from other gelatinous upland and feeders that are driven mainly by the seasonal variation in sea surface temperature and also the foraging availability. And we can see this uh, more clearly here by plotting the sunfish's positions there in black over daily variations of sea surface temperature. And you can see that the sunfish was actually tracking a restricted SST range. Uh, although it didn't um, track directly the high productive regions, it seemed that it avoided the oligotrophic uh, areas here in the deep blue, so very low productive um, regions. And lastly, is, uh, they seem to prefer uh, the frontal area, so areas of convergence of two water masses of different temperatures that are known to be highly productive uh, by themselves. This strong association with the um, SST fronts was, actually, was uh, seen pretty much in every study for both species, for Mola and uh, Mola, Mola and Alexandrini. And you can see that, for instance, here with the Alexandrini track, uh, tracking the frontal region there of the, the Galapagos Island and the consistent association of the large molars uh, with the appalling fronts of uh, California. However, not all individuals move and what the, some uh, tracking studies have shown is that where is the, it is the larger sunfish that displays uh, further away from the tagging region where small individuals tend to stay uh, behind, to stay in the, in, the, in the tagging area. This may be indicative of a size uh, dependent um, residency. So are we facing or seeing a, a maturation driven partial migration for the populations? Some, this, uh, some um, sighting studies also support this hypothesis. For instance, the larger observation, the, the observation of um, larger sunfish molars of British Columbia just during uh, the warmer months, and also the case of Ireland, where uh, smaller individuals are seen year round, but um, larger ones are just observed in summer. So this is the the the, the summary of the um, of what is known as general patterns at the horizontal scale, and I'm going to start to focus now on the vertical uh, dimension. And you can see there the recorded maximum depth for both species over a kilometer for, for the Alexandrini tag of Galapagos, which is pretty impressive. Um, yet, just going back in time, the first, uh, there was a, this first uh, satellite tag uh, tracked uh, study was actually on the Masturus, and the, the authors showed the first evidence for a dial pattern in the vertical profile. So 
the sunfish were spending uh, more uh, more time in the surface during the night and while diving or uh, diving deeper during the day this is the normal dial vertical migration and was shown after for the mola mola in the carta milan lowest study sorry with the sunfish diving below the thermocline during the day but staying in the surface during the night and again in a uh, in the data set of california there was they were diurnal vertical migrations to the deep whereas the the sunfish spend most of their time uh, in the surface layers at night we also seen this behavior for the northeast atlantic data set and we can see here for instance these individuals diving deeper during the day and staying in the surface at night but together with this uh, normal DVM, we also saw that some individuals just spend most of their time or all of their time in the surface, no matter what time of the day it was. And also that some um, reverse DVM, some have the, the have shown the reverse DVM, so sunfish spending more time in the surface during the day and diving deeper at night. So most likely these varied behaviors reflect the difference in the prey distribution which by themselves are all uh, bonded by, by, by thermal constraints, by, by bad temperature. But what we've seen is that this reverse TVM of uh, diving deeper during the night and staying in the surface at, uh, during the day was associated with frontal areas, whereas the normal TVM of diving deeper uh, just during the day uh, were seen in the mixed layers, so the mixed water, water column. So it seems that these uh, altered behaviors or different in behaviors are an adjustment to the resources encountered. And this is in line or further supports the study that was published before in 2010 by Humphreys and all, but they, look, they were looking not just on, they were not just focusing on, on sunfish, but on other marine predators. But they saw and they reported that their sunfish was uh, behaving, uh, having this switching pattern between the levy search type of movements in areas with uh, less productivity and less prey to this erratic Brownian uh, type of motion in uh, highly ab abundant um, regions, uh, abundant prey regions like the continental shelf. So how complex is actually the, the foraging behavior of sunfishes? Uh, it was only in 2015 that uh, the first animal born camera was deployed on a, on a mola and a big one by Nakamura, and you can see the package uh, there. And it was pretty impressive to, to see that they recorded um, feeding events. So not only what the sunfish was encountered, but actually feeding. And they, 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 they report that the sunfish were mainly eating siphonophore, cyphozoa, and tenophorus. It's important to note here that for the cyphozoa, sunfish were eating mainly the gonads and the uh, oral arms just they left the the less energetic bell behind so evidence for a selective feeding strategy which is pretty awesome uh, but this package not only had the camera but also an accelerometer and a body temperature sensor a body temperature recorder so what they they've seen is that all the foraging and the feeding events occur during the day so you can see here the exploratory dives with the feeding events during daylight hours, whereas during the night, sunfish suspend all of this time at, at the surface and again the day after and so on. And when they looked at the body temperature, they realized that the, the sunfish uh, body temperature varied during the day with the diving uh, excursions, but stayed most constantly during the night. And again, vary during the day with the, the, the excursions to the deep and constant at night. So these cycles between the decrease, the slowly decrease of body temperature in the deep and the rapid recover uh, at the surface actually mimics the speed of the fish. So they found that the sunfish were uh, slowing down in the deep waters and accelerating when at surface. You can see the time frames there and where these were taken. So in the deep, slowing down and speeding up when at the surface. And all of this is indicative of a physiological uh, regulation of the body temperature, which is in line with the behavioral thermal regulation advanced previously by Cartemil and all. And Lois, sorry. 
So regarding these foraging rewarming cycles of uh, the sunfish, what the authors shown is that there's an optimal duration for the maximum foraging time, and that this increase with the body temper with the body size. So they found that the dive duration for foraging in, uh, was larger or longer in sunfishes of a uh, larger body mass. So there seems to be an advantage of a, of a larger body size for, for the species for Molida, for Mola Mola. So all in all, the foraging ecology of sunfish seems to be this balance between the time spent in the deep, where the food is pretty abundant, and the time spent where the, the temperature is uh, comfortable. So there's this exchange between the rapid uh, thermal recovery after foraging for maximizing the foraging time itself. Uh, as remaining questions, of course, there are areas in the world there's no when there's no um, sunfish tracking. Uh, it will be super cool to to tag and track other species or species other than Mola Mola and Alexandrini. And most importantly, because all the studies that we have access to have been uh, tagged, uh, coastal tagged, um, it will be very important to actually go uh, go on to the open water and tag those lonely migrants the very big sunfishes and then link back to the the reproduction maybe we can shed a light on the spawning locations and the timings uh finally there's a lot of people that we need to thank there were phds involved so the supervisory team thank you so much the field work everyone that was involved in in the set net and helping us but for the purpose of this talk, I need to thank personally to Inga, Marianne, Tierney, Graham and Chang for the sharing of the sunfish tract movements that we were able to replot here. Regarding the funding for, as I said, for our work. And um, thank you, that will be it for me. If you have any questions and you cannot get hold of it to me, please drop us an email and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Ah, well, thank you so much, Laura. That was that was an amazing um, <clears throat> and super helpful to put all those tracks together. That was um, that was an image I so wanted for the for the book was to was to have where have we actually tracked sunfish and where um, you know where where are the places where where we need to track them. So um, <clears throat> I'm so glad that she took took the opportunity to put that all together.